G'day guys, Ollie here. Um, just getting ready for another mission this afternoon. I'm going to shoot out with uh, Junior if he doesn't uh, doesn't bail on me. He's a bit worried about the visibility, but um, I'm keen to get into it. So um, yeah, fingers crossed the, the wind holds. It looks like it should be dropping and not much swell. So yeah, we're going to go try and target a few kingfish and, um, and other bits and pieces. I'm just going to show you a quick uh, rundown of prepping my gun, just getting it ready for um, for the dive and yeah, just putting a new shaft in um, because last week I got absolutely mauled by some um, bronze whaler sharks. They, they nailed my kingfish and turned my, uh, my spear into a banana. So fresh new spear and um, we're into it this afternoon. So on my last dive I got absolutely smashed by some sharks, about 12 bronze whalers. Um, tore my kingy off the, the spear and just bent the spear into a banana. So I've got a a, uh, a nice new shaft here um, it's currently connected with mono mono filament I um, I do love this stuff for all round spearing it's really quick to to relay reload on the spear gun and um, very practical and strong but um, I have lost some kingfish in the past due to um, this snapping on the on the reef or uh, yeah or it might have been a shark it's uh, hard to know but um, for summer, I like to stick to Dyneema. It's got a lot more um, wear and tear on that reef. If a fish, like a big kingfish, hits the reef, it's going to um, have much less chance of this breaking through. So I'm going to rig this straight to the spear and um, tie a basic bowline. So we're just going to run this reel out. If you've got a reel gun, the line will run up the barrel here, underside, through an eyelet or similar in the, in the muzzle. Yep. And then we'll tie it onto the spear here. It's a case of tying a simple bowline. If you don't know how to tie a bowline, this is one method over itself. Line comes up the rabbit hole. Yep, around the tree, back down the rabbit hole. Set that around about there, away from the notch, and not too close to the mech. There's a lot of fancy knots you can do, but the good old bowline has a very, very high breaking strength. Could take a lot of load, and it's super easy. Right, always having the shooting line on top, little notch underneath, and that will fit into the mech. Beautiful, grab your hand, slide the shaft down, locks in, solid. Line comes up, over the muzzle, down the back, down to the line release, grab it there with your hand. Tighten the reel up, tighten that drag up a little bit, and there you go. Gun's rigged, ready for some action this afternoon. Fingers crossed. Just got the uh, IRB up, it's been a few months in the undercover and started first pop. Get this thing blowing up and we're uh, ready to go. Sweet, IRB's all pumped up, motor's running mint. Good to go, mission's on. Oh, Junior, dive buddy's arrived. Sup, bro? How's it going? <laughs> Been a while. All right, we made it to the launch spot. It's absolutely stunning weather. Calm, calm seas. Um, it's just gone low tide about half an hour ago, so uh, pushing in now and um, yeah, we've got the whole afternoon ahead of us, incoming tide, spot on, so get geared up and um, get into it, can't wait.
not sure if we've got a leak or the valve or what, but uh, yeah, pontoon's a bit flat. Yeah. Junior's sorting it out. <laughs> Get it nice and hard, bro. So many fish in the water, just over there. All right, um, anchored up. So there's massive workups just out there. We're gonna swim over there and um, yeah, hopefully there's kingfish under. It looks like kawai and, and whatnot on the surface. So um, fingers crossed there's some greenbacks underneath and we'll um, get some shafts into them. Yeah. Have a, have a look at the boat Jumping in and the water was just green, murky, lots of surge and swell. Not the most pleasant conditions. We had been told it was 15 meters visibility out here. Clean water um, and it was far from it unfortunately. Certain places such as the Hauraki Gulf here where we're diving can be affected quite a lot by rainfall which we'd had a few days of heavy rain so unfortunately in a few days it had turned and um, yeah we were presented with this very very green water unfortunately but hey that's uh, spearfishing sometimes you get a bit lucky sometimes a bit unlucky with the visibility. Here's Junior just peering off a ledge hoping for that kingfish. Well, that was a bit of a disaster out at the, uh, the kingy spot. It was about three meters vis. Um, my intel vis report was a bit off. The guy said it was 15 meters. Um, yeah, just 10 meters short, 10 to 13 meters short. So anyways, we're tucked into this beautiful little bay here. It's really sheltered. Water looks much the same, maybe a meter more vis if we're lucky. So we'll um, set a few kinnavirlies and try and get a snapper for dinner salvage the day but it's um it's beautiful anyways diving in new areas i love to just explore as much as i can swimming along big pieces of coast and uh trying to find those magic spots where the fish congregate and uh, all the action's happening. Here I am just diving down onto the weed edges, cruising around exploring all the different terrain and, and searching for a suitable spot to set a kinnaburli to try and bring in some snapper. Unfortunately, due to overfishing here in the Hauraki Gulf um, of New Zealand, the kinna, as we call them here, um, or sea urchin, otherwise known as, um, have become a bit rampant due to um, their main predators, which are the snapper and the crayfish, being very low in numbers. So, in some areas, they're quite out of control and they eat the kelp stalks and kill the kelp beds, and the habitats um, just start to die off. That's where you get these big barren areas. So. Uh, sacrificing a few of these for a, a burley for a snapper is not the end of the world and um, yeah, there's plenty of them to go around. Most of New Zealand has big kelp beds as such and um, make sure to dive into them when you're out there spearfishing and freediving. Have an explore, there's a whole other world hidden underneath them and um, usually good cray habitats and, and all sorts. Here I am diving through and 
managed to find a nice little cavernous area and surprisingly find a crayfish in there and, and uh, yeah, bit of a tussle, finally got him out and yeah, I was pretty stoked and surprised. Diving down once again, searching through this new terrain, it was just so fun. Nice sponges and corals and, and all sorts going on in these dark caves. I really wasn't expecting to see this terrain, so I didn't have my dive torch, unfortunately. I could just make out another pair of antenna from a crayfish, so went in for the grab and managed to get a really nice crayfish. Another awesome crayfish to take home for dinner. Beautiful. Alright, another cray. <laughs> Love finding new spots. Beautiful. Awesome. Busy exploring these caves and finding crays. Almost forgot I'd set up early. About 15 20 minutes later, tucking one cray up in an armpit and uh, holding the other one in one hand, so I. <laughs> Made my way down this kelp bed, down to the Kinnaburli and yeah, sure enough there were a couple of snapper there feasting so chose one of the biggest snapper and yeah, whacked it. With only one arm free it was a bit awkward retrieving the snapper but luckily it wasn't very big and yeah, got it up to the surface, flop had engaged, shaft was right through the fish um, so yeah, secured a nice snapper. Pretty stoked. Mm -hmm. Right, awesome. Two crates in a snapper, that's dinner. <coughs> My hands are full, so I'm gonna have to swim back to the boat and uh, might come back for some more. Woo. Oh, well, that went all right. Love it when a new spot um, pays off. It's always a nice surprise at a new spot to um, pull some fish out, especially crays. Um, I just found this neat little um, big crack and that big crevices and, and kind of like a cave underneath. And I'm like, saw it from the surface, thought, yeah, that looks, that looks pretty crayfish uh, looking territory. So sure enough dove down and um yeah pulled one out uh, went up further up the crack got another one a bigger one and um yeah then i went and checked on my my little kinna kinna burley for the snapper and um yeah there was a few snapper on there i couldn't quite concentrate i had uh, a cray under my arm and one on the other hand and one arm one arm on the gun and managed to shot off i didn't really have a good look around but i saw a few other nice snappers swim off so um i'm gonna go back out and um set another kin of early and, and see leave it for a bit longer this time and, and see what else comes in so um yeah pretty stoked a couple of nice crayfish in here oh crayfish wants my snapper and um yeah this one in here is quite nice beautiful cray so yeah still a few crays in the hierarchy gulf not many but um look hard enough you can find them and that's just a beautiful snapper for dinner so yum get that on the ice in the bag back into it right so i'm back in the water and um if you can see up behind me there it's a big crack in the cliff so if you're looking for crays and you're trying to find some cray country usually on some sort of point where it's getting some current food for the crays and, and stuff where there's fish there's usually crays and then if you can find a nice big crack like that it usually runs down underwater and uh, often into big crevices and, and caves and stuff. So um, I've just dropped my gun and I'll, um, I'll show you underwater um, and we'll go for a bit of a look in this uh, big crack.
it was an awesome area of little cracks and caves going in all directions just unfortunately I didn't have my dive torch um, yeah I'll definitely be back and explore these areas look at it it's just perfect crayfish territory nice boulders and overhangs everywhere I need a torch for that. <laughs> Setting one last kinab early, I thought I'd have one last look for some craze while that was doing its thing and crawling through these kelp beds, checking under every single boulder and rock. Um, didn't get as lucky this time, but hey, two craze was plenty and enough for a good feed for me and Junior each. With no craze found, um, I still wanted to wait a little bit longer while that Kinnaburli did its thing and went down the coast a bit, finding a new piece of coast and uh, yeah, it was nice terrain. Nice sandy bottom here. I'm sure once summer comes along with some warmer water, a place like this would come to life. So yeah, I'll put that in the notebook and pay a visit in a few more months. make my way back down final dive of the day on this Kinnaburli I'd spooked a few snap already left it for quite a bit longer and added a few more onto the pile and here I come with a nice approach slow stealth creeping along the weeds just being very quiet cruising along I was approaching the sand edge and uh, it just got dirtier and dirtier the tide was pushing quite hard at this point and bringing in some Pretty nasty water and by the time I got close to my burly spot I was so disorientated couldn't see a thing and uh, decided to call it. Spooked a few snapper on the distance and um, yeah decided to make my way back to Junior and see how he'd got on. Found a couple of tasty oysters and grabbed a few of those as well. Nice little surprise on the way back to the boat. Well, we've caught it for the afternoon. Losing a bit of sun. Wind's chopping up. Time for a feed, eh? Maybe yeah. a beard. Yeah, so a uh, snapper and a, and a couple of craze. Can't really complain. What an afternoon, beautiful evening. Got a feed, found some new territory. Definitely gonna go back and explore next time. Some of those caves in there where I found those crays um, were quite deep and vast and I just couldn't see anything. So go back there with a torch and, and see what I can find. But yeah, stoked. Crays and snapper for dinner. That's what it's about, getting out there, getting a feed, getting some exercise, rest in the mind. Um, yeah, just an awesome sport. And um, yeah, highly recommend anyone watching who um, is thinking about getting into spearfishing, go for it. Um, any questions on how to get into it and whatnot, where to start, um, write a comment below or flick me a message and I'll, um, I'll try and help you out, eh? Anyways. Hope you enjoyed that uh, mission and um, yeah, plenty more missions coming into summer here in New Zealand so yeah, stay tuned. If you liked it, um, yeah, feel free to give me a thumbs up and um, subscribe if you haven't if you want to see a lot more of this content this summer and uh, yeah, plenty of action and plenty of missions uh, planned so see you soon.